Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 70. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 6. If you're in the class, just go to our class website. Hey, we're talking about the normal probability distribution. We just got done doing probability for less than or equal to a value. Now we want to talk about greater than. Here's our question. Based on past data, estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistic test that will be 15 or more. What should we do if 37% get a score of 15 or more? All right, um, here's our x. Our operator is going to be greater than or equal to, meaning that the top part of the chart is what we're interested in. Our mean is still 12, and our standard deviation is still 2, as in our earlier videos. Now, just like last time, we'll calculate our probabilities and our x's from probabilities using the inverse functions. But first, I want to calculate and make a chart. And I want to show you a slightly different trick this time. Let's come down here. I want to calculate using the norm dist equals norm dist. So equals norm dist. And our norm dist will calculate. Uh, two ways. It'll calculate the height for our chart, which we're going to do here. And then later, when we use 1 as the last argument, it'll calculate probabilities. So our x, we've already, just like in our last video, um, decided since we had 12, we wanted to do six standard deviations below and six standard deviations above. So the easy way to do this is just type a 0 and a 0.1 and highlight both of them and copy them down. And that's a quick way to create all those numbers. All right, so our x is going to be relative cell reference 1 to my left. The mean is going to be this 12. And I'm going to lock it with my F4 key, comma, the standard deviation is going to be this 2 locked with my F4 key. And then comma, cumulative is going to be 0. That is for the height. That's how we calculate uh, all the create the chart. Control Enter. And then I'm going to double click and send it down. Now, actually, I think I typed a 0 there. No, I did that. I highlighted. Watch this. I'm going to delete all these just to show you this, because it's a useful trick. Highlight 0 and 1. You've established the pattern add point 0.1s, because the, how you got from 0 to point 0.1 is adding point 0.1. You point to your uh, fill handle, and when you see your crosshair or angry rabbit, you click and drag. You can see the little screen tip telling you. And when you get down to, I think, 20 is all I did it. So that's a quick way to do that. There's other ways to do that also. Now, uh, let's go ahead. We've calculated that. Let's highlight the uh, field names at the top. And I want to highlight all the data points. Actually, let's do it different than the last time. Let's just highlight this one, because that one always gets in the way at the beginning. So I'm going to highlight there, Control-Shift-Down arrow. I'm going to go up to Insert and Area. And I'm going to select the first one. Just like that, it got that nice little uh, uh, blue normal distribution. I'm going to, this chart, notice we're way down here. Uh, to drag it up is real, uh, quite difficult. So I'm going to click on the edge. And when I see that, I'm going to Control X for cut. I'm going to use Control Home to jump back up to the top. And then um, maybe scroll right there and put my cursor right there and Control V. Now. Just like last time, I want to uh, add a title. And I want to change the axis. And I'm going to, we're then going to add some area. And I'm going to show you how to link some uh, added shapes that will help us figure out what the probability is. First thing is, let's go ahead and change our axis. It's just not right. I'm going to make sure that I, have, I can get to that x-axis right there. Click right there. Go up to Design, Select Data. The one series that we have. Here's the horizontal category. We're going to click Edit. I'm going to click in the top cell and Control-Shift-Down arrow. Click OK. Click OK. So there we have that. Let's go ahead. And last time we uh, typed the um, content here. But watch this. There's a way that you can create a, f um, a label using a formula. And we've seen this once or twice already in the class. I'm going to type uh, equals. And I'm going to click on this right here. And I'm going to use the join symbol 
Shift 7. And then I need a space. So I'm going to type in double quotes, then space, double quotes, and then another ampersand to join. So right now, if I hit Enter, that's a text formula using cell references and text inside of quotes. That text happens to be a space joined by the ampersands. Ah, the beauty of that is if I change this to 13, right? the label will change. And ultimately, that's what you want to do in Excel, especially if you're making a chart that you're using every day. Control-Z. Let's um, click here in F2, and I'm going to type ampersand, double quote, comma, space, and double quote ampersand, because I needed a comma after the mean. I wanted to say standard deviation. I'm going to click there, and then ampersand, double quote, space, uh, double quote. Actually, you know what we should do? We should do an equal sign. Space, double quote, ampersand. And then click right there. Now let's hit enter. Oh, okay. So there's there was already an equal sign. Oh, so I already had one there. So I'm going to click here and hit F2 and get rid of that. I'm going to click. I'm going to edit this by backspacing. You know, it's usually safer to do it up here like that. And I'm going to, uh, oh, let's go ahead and click here. And then I'm going to hit F2. Cursor jumps up there, equals, and I'm going to click on that cell. OK, so now I have this. You know, that's too big. I don't like that. So I'm going to go up to Home, click on the font size, and maybe type uh, 12. Now watch this. I don't like that either. I want to put test score equals mean. So I'm going to come over here and edit this cell right here. Remember, this cell is then used by this formula, which the chart is then using that. So I'm going to click here and type uh, test score equals mean. Sure enough, that formula updates, and that one updates there also. All right, we're going to also add some uh, another data series here in just a moment, but for right now, that, that's just fine. Now, let's get busy calculating. We want to know what is the probability, right? We're given this number right here, 37%. What if the 37% of the class got 15 or more, right? 15 or more. We want to calculate from our past data what the probability should be, all right? Let's calculate our z first, number of standard deviations above or below the mean. I take my particular x minus my mean. Obviously, it's above because the x is greater than the mean divided by 2. Enter. Oh, z 1.5. Now let's do, oh, let's think about this. Hey, let's uh, plot. Let's plot this area first before we even um, do, uh, do our individual calculations over here. Here's our column, area for greater than. We'll do our same trick we did last time. Since 15 is the x we're interested in, we're going to say, hey, our, is this x here? greater than or equal to 15. If it is, show the probability. Otherwise, show nothing. So we we'll use our if function equals if. Now, the logical test is going to be relative cell reference our x. Is it greater than or equal to? And I'm going to scroll up and get my 15. And I'm going to hit the F4 key, because I need that locked. If that's true, what do we want? We want the probability. Right? right now, it'll come out false. But when it's later down the chart, it'll come out true, right? So that's the value of true, comma, and it's relative cell reference, comma. And then the value of false, double quote, double quote, close parentheses, control, enter. And then, oh, it's blank. Is there a formula? Sure, double click and send it down. That double clicking trick works because there's something to the left. I'm going to control down arrow and then kind of scroll up and Oh, that is just so magic. It got to the 15, and it knew to show me that. That's a, a great trick for lots of charting, uh, lots of types of charts. We've seen that before with a column chart, right? Now we're seeing it with an area chart. Notice I pointed to the edge. If you want to keep it proportional, please hold Shift when you click and drag. The chart is selected, so I go up to Design, Select. I want to what? Add. And the series name is going to be that one right there, area for greater than 15. I'm going to get rid of that, delete, click on the top cell, control shift down arrow, click OK. Edit. It didn't get that right either. So I'm going to have to scroll all the way back up and get there, C 
control shift down arrow click OK click OK Wow that is so cool now let's scoot this over here uh, maybe I'll scoot it down oh actually watch this I'm going to uh, let's click this and control one I'm gonna say show the legend below bottom close and then I'm gonna hold point to the corner and hold shift so I can click and drag in oh that didn't work control Z <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll just drag it down here. Oh, that didn't work either. That's the wrong cursor. You need that cursor right there to move. I accidentally selected uh, which one? One of those. But there it is. That that move cursor. I can move it down here. I do need it a little bit smaller. Oh, here I'm going to click here. Go up to home and change this to eight. I can change it back later. I'm going to click right there. Go up to home. Change it to eight. Now I can make it a little bit smaller. All right, that area will help us as we visualize. Now what happens since uh, Excel does cumulative from here all the way up to here? So if we put in 15, it's going to give us all that area right there. And really what we want is this area up here. So when we do our norm dist, we have to take 1 minus that equals 1 minus and then norm dist. We have our x of 15, our mean of 12, our standard deviation. Cumulative is what? If you want the cumulative, you type 1. Enter. And there it is. Ooh, so not, oh, 6%. From past data, only 6% of the people get more than 15. What's happening here? 37. We must have an incredibly smart class. Or maybe the teacher finally knew what he was doing or something. OK, so based on past data, it would be reasonable to assume that 6.68% of all, all the scores uh, on the next test will be 15 or more. If we run the test and 37% of the tests are above 15, we need to investigate why. right? Maybe the uh, uh, class is just uh, doing a great job. They're all studying real hard. Maybe the teacher's doing a better job. Maybe the answer key got out. All right, so probability, very useful. We did it above here. Now, I would actually like to link. I want that number linked to this chart. And the way we can do that, I'm going to see if I can click and make this a little bit bigger. There's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, one way is to go uh, up to insert and we have shapes. The shapes I have mine s squished down. Illustrations, usually it's big. You do shapes and then you can pick any one of these shapes and link that shape to a cell. I'm going to go ahead and actually notice the cursor is a little cross here. I'm going to click escape to turn it off. I need to scoot this down so I can get to it. So there it is right there. I want to be able to get to that cell. So I'm going to go up to Insert, Shapes there, and I'm going to click and drag. Now, just like a label, if you hit F2, what happens to your cursor? <laughs> it's flashing. You type an equal sign and click right there, and sure enough, it will calculate. It'll uh, link that. So then I can make this a little bit wider. Uh, drag it up here move that like that. Notice that cursor right there is the change the size. Now how about an arrow? Insert. I want uh, shapes and I want an arrow. Okay and control one. Line color. Solid line. I'm going to say red. Line style. Maybe increase the font. Close. So there we have it. Um, now, when you try and move this, it uh, it's sometimes they come along, sometimes they don't. Um, this one looks like it's coming along. If they don't, some objects won't. You have to click there and then hold Control and click right there, and then they'll move together. This one's working out just fine. And what happens if we change this to 16? Ah, look at that. Uh, our chart. The area changes. We've linked it by uh, this if formula. And that chart label changes too. I change it to 18. 
Ooh, less than 1% chance that someone could get an 18. What if I change it to uh, 10? So 84% of the class should be able to get above a uh, score of 10. Our labels are like. Now I'm going to move this out of the way so we can finish our calculations over here. So here we have a z. We want to find out the probability that z is greater than or equal to minus 1. In fact, what I'm, I'm going to change this back. There's minus 1. I want to change this back to our 15. So now we're trying to find. Um, 1.5, so there it is, 1.5 using our z. So equals, and we're going to use our norm s dist. And there's our z, 1.5, close parentheses, enter. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, that's the probability cumulative. All the way to there. We're really interested in uh, up here, so of course, we forgot our minus, our one minus, so one minus, and then that gives us the upper end. Now, what about doing the inverse? Given an x or a z, what's the cumulative probability? Well, let's go over and look right here. If we give it this probability right here, what is it going to think? Flip it over because it's symmetric. It'll think you gave it right to here. Remember, split down the middle, symmetrical on either side. We got this 6, which is, tells us the probability on the upper end. So if we really do want this 15 to pop out, we're actually going to have to give it all of this. Remember, because the way the functions work is from the smallest up to the x you put in is a probability. So if we, if we have this probability and we want that x, we have to say 1 minus that. And so that's how we'll get our 15 popped out from that probability. Equals norm dist. Boop, boop, I did that before too. Norm inverse. The inverse is when we have the probability and we want the x. So our probability, remember we said 1 minus this, comma, and then we got to give it, because it's the norm inverse, no s there. We have to give it the mean, the standard deviation, and then close parentheses. And there it is, a 15. Now, what about with the norm s inverse equals norm? S, and we have two of them here, and we want the inverse because we're going to give it the cumulative probability, and it'll spit out the z. 1 minus that right there because it's on the upper end, and then enter 1.5. All right, um, so that's on the upper end. When we uh, come back in our next video, we'll, we've talked about less than, greater than, and we'll have to talk about finding area between two x's. All right, see you next video.